Welcome to the joy of editing. In today's episode, I'll be presenting another full edit tutorial that focuses on the essential skill of balancing light and contrast using the TK8 plugin for Photoshop. I'm Dave Kelly, your host, and I'm excited to guide you through this tutorial. Stay tuned. Hello everyone, welcome to the joy of editing. Thank you for joining me again today. I hope everyone is doing great out there. Hey, the weather is starting to break a little bit. We are heading into spring, an exciting time of the year. I'm really excited about it. Well, I have a nice full edit tutorial for you today, working on balancing light and contrast. So we're going to just jump right into this and let's have some fun. By the way, if you don't yet own the TK8 plugin for Photoshop, you can click on my affiliate link found in the description below this video. Just click on that link. It'll take you to the TK web store where you can purchase the TK8 plugin for Photoshop along with training videos. And if you use my promo code DK15, you'll save 15% off your entire purchase. And when you do that, you're supporting the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And for that, I truly thank you. By the way, you can download this image as well as the PDF notes that go along with it gives you step-by-step -step instructions, which will really help. I recommend that you watch the video first and then maybe give this a try. Now, you don't have to do everything I do, but you know, they're just suggestions. Everybody edits in their own way, but I'm just giving you some ideas how we can use the TK8 plugin for Photoshop. So follow along. I think it's a great way of learning and then adapt what I'm teaching to your method of processing. I started out this edit in Lightroom. As you can see, I just have some basic adjustments here. I'm using a linear profile for this image. And also I've added no sharpening or noise reduction, just some color noise reduction, which I always do. And then when I took it into Photoshop, I added Topaz Sharpen AI to it. It was a really low ISO image, so I did not need to like use heavy denoising software like Topaz Denoise AI. Just use Sharpen AI just to sharpen it. When you download the image file, it, it will already be denoised and sharpened for you. So you could just start right where I start at in Photoshop. I'll start with making a selection of the sky and turning it into a channel as well as the foreground. I'm going to do something a little bit different today. I'm going to show you how if you want to get a tighter sky selection than you normally get using Photoshop, I'll show you how you can get that. I don't always use it, but sometimes if you want that sky to be a little bit tighter, this is a good method for you. And let me show you what I mean. I'll click this button on the combo panel, or you could get it on the CX panel as well. You'll find it right here. So click this and Photoshop will make a sky selection for you. And the next thing I'm going to do is come up into my channels on the TK8 multi-mask panel. So click this button right here to open up my channels. Click on active selection. And if you'll notice, you can see how the sky feathers into the top of the foreground. Now we can make that tighter and here's what I mean. We're going to use the mass calculator to do that. Click on the mass calculator. We're going to subtract. So click on the subtract button. Now what we're going to do is invert this sky selection. And when we do that, we've selected the foreground. Can you see? And now we're going to click equals. And now you'll notice the foreground is not selected as much on the top here. You know, it's a lot tighter selection. And now let's save that out as a sky channel. So click on the save button right here. And we're just going to call this sky S K Y and click OK. And now you'll notice it lives down in your channels. Now we can still see we have a sky mask. So let's come back over to this invert button and let's click it. And now we'll invert it. And now we have the foreground and now click on your mask calculator button. And we're going to subtract again. So click on subtract. And now we're going to invert it again. So click the invert. And now we're going to select the sky again. And now we'll click equal and we'll subtract out the sky from the foreground. So it gives us a tighter foreground selection as well. And now all we need to do is save it. So click this button on the multi mask panel for save. And we're going to call this foreground and click OK. And now you'll notice our foreground is in channels. And I call this setting ourselves up for success because we will be using the sky and foreground channels to help us in our masking. And don't forget to download those notes because you will see the entire step-by-step -step process here to get those tighter sky selections. So you can keep that as a reference in case you ever need it. 
Now you'll notice I still have this mask channel here. All we need to do is click this X and that goes away. And now we can start with my first step that I always do and that is balance and contrast. I'll start with the foreground and then we'll move to the sky. So what we wanna do is come up to my channels, click the my channels button, click on the foreground. I'll do the foreground first. Grab the mask calculator, so click on the mask calculator button, click X for intersect. We can X out of here. And I always come to luminosity mask, so click the luminosity mask button. And I always get a midtones three. And the only reason I use that is to protect me from clipping shadows and highlights. So click on the midtones three button, click equals. And now you can see I have that midtones three mask only on the foreground. And we're going to output that to a color grading tool. So click the color grading tool button right here. And now we can balance out shadows, midtones, and highlights. I always like to start with midtones. So I'm going to click on the midtones block. And I'm just going to open up those midtones to somewhere right about here, I think looks pretty good. I'm going to go to shadows. We're going to build up some contrast now. So I'm going to darken up the shadows a bit. So I'm going to take the shadows back to right about here. And you see that nice contrast that comes in there. It's looking better already. And now I'm just going to go to highlights and just drag this highlight slider to the right just a little bit, just to open up the highlights, just a slight amount right there. Now here is the before and here's the after. And now let's work on the sky. My editing philosophy, by the way, is to bring in a pretty flat image. So I'm going to shut this, um, layer off again as you can see it's pretty flat because i really like what the color grading tool gives me when it works with shadows midtones and highlights i really like the effect i get i think i get a nice beautiful starting point hey and by the way don't forget to like share and subscribe this really helps to promote my channel and i appreciate when you do that and also leave comments and questions i really want to hear from you Let's keep a nice dialogue going. I really appreciate that. And I think it helps us all. Right now we have the color grading tool here so we can X out of it. Nothing will change here. And let's go back to the My Channels button and click it. And this time we're going to click on Sky. Grab that mask calculator. Don't you love the mask calculator? I, I'm totally in love with the mask calculator. Call me weird, but I really love it. Now we're going to click on X for intercept or intersect. I'm not in a fighter plane here. I'm not intercepting. I want to intersect. And now we can click this X, click on the luminosity mask button. And the same thing as we did with the foreground, click on midtones three to protect the shadows and highlights from clipping and click equal. And now you can see we have a midtones three in the sky only. I'll put that to a color grading tool. And let's start with the midtones. I'm going to click on this gray block for midtones. And I want to darken up that sky. So I'm going to drag this to the left to right about here. Now, nothing changes here until you release your mouse click. And I think right there looks pretty good. And I want to just favor the sky a little bit towards blue like that. And that's what I love about this color grading tool. It's basically a curves adjustment, but it makes curves adjustments very simple and user friendly, which is really helpful. And now I'm going to click on the highlight block and just slightly open up the highlights just a little bit, just, just like that. I think that looks good. Here's the before and here is the after. And I think we're off to a good start. We started out looking like this and now we look like this. So we're going in the right direction. The next thing I want to do is get all the darker foreground shadows and darken them up a bit more because there's a lot of nice things happening here in the darker areas and it'll build up a little bit of texture. But let's see what we can do here. Let's X out of this color grading tool. Let's get a curves adjustment layer. Let's put a black mask on it and put it in the multiply blend mode because the multiply blend mode will darken everything up and add some little bit of contrast as well. Let's come up to the luminosity masks button, click it. And I want dark tones. You know, you could start with darks one and just kind of work your way down. But I ended up going to like darks four and you can see how we got all those light areas are the darkest tones in that dark four range there and below. And then all I want to do is, and you'll notice we have nothing in the sky selected. So we don't have to worry about protecting the sky. The mask is protecting it for us. We just need to output that to that curves adjustment layer by clicking this button right here. This will output that mask right on that layer and check it out. Here's the before and here's the after, but see how all the darker tones, even up here in these rocks up here, 
but a lot down in here. Let's check it out. This is the before and this is the after. So I like what that's doing. I really like all this light that's flooding through here in the center of the image. So we want to bring out some of that saturation, some of those yellow tones in there, and we're going to increase saturation there. Now, I do want to protect the sky because there could be some yellow tones up in here. So what we're going to do is come up to My Channels, click on the My Channels button, click on Foreground. Let's grab our Mass Calculator. I love that Mass Calculator. X for intersect, so click on the X. X out of here. Now, we need to select these yellows, so we're going to use a saturation mask. So click on this button right here. And we're going to select some of the yellow tone in here. And I think like right about here should be good. And you can see right there in the color picker, that's where that color and luminance level was at right there. Click OK. And we can see we're selecting that. And now I want to tighten that up. So I'm going to take this slider and drag it to the left to maybe somewhere right about there. And let's lighten that up as well. I don't want to go too light and lose my feathering, but we can go pretty light somewhere. I think in this range right about here. Let's click equals. And you can see up in the sky, there is yellow up in there. You see that? When I click equals, that'll go away. You see that? Now we only have it right here. We're going to output that to a hue saturation adjustment layer. So click on this button right here. And then grab your targeted adjustment tool. So click on this. And we can just click and start to drag this to the right. And look how that just lightens up. Isn't that beautiful? That is exciting to me. We don't want to go too far, but I think maybe right about there. But it just lights that up in a beautiful way. So let's check it out. Here's the before and here's the after. Isn't that beautiful? Let me take a second and talk about blend modes and the hue saturation adjustment layer. Right now we're in normal. Now the interesting thing about the normal blend mode is it boosts the color and the brightness. That's why that has gotten a lot lighter in there, which really works out nice here. If you didn't want that, you could change the blend mode to the color blend mode. I'm going to click this button right here. And you notice it does not affect the lightness. And then also, it only affects the color. Now, if I click on luminosity, it won't affect the color. It'll only affect the lightness. So you see it's gotten lighter. But in the normal blend mode for this particular instance, it looks fantastic because it's affecting the brightness as well as the color. Blend modes in Photoshop are really our friends. Today it's all about balance and contrast. So what I want to do is bring some contrast out in these beautiful lines in this field right here. Let's darken up some of the darker lines and just really make this field sing. Because the fields are alive with the sound of music. Okay, so let's come up and get another Curves Adjustment Layer. So click this button right here. It's really handy on the TK8 Multimask Panel. I love this. So click this. We're going to darken, right? So let's put a black mask on there to hide it. And let's click Multiply. And I only put that black mask on there because if I didn't, like if I click this X, you'd see the image get all dark like that. And that would get my head going in the wrong direction. So I don't even want to see that. Now, I think a zone mask will select some of these darker tones. So let's click on the zone mask button here. The color picker comes up, and I want to get a tone, a darker tone in here. Uh, maybe like right about here. And there's that tone right there, and click OK. And now it's making our selection. Now let's tighten that up. Let's really tighten it. Take this slider and drag it to the left into about right about here. And now let's lighten it up a good bit. So let's take the brightness slider and drag it over to the right to maybe right about there, I think should be good. And now we're going to output this to a black mask painting through a selection with a white brush. So we're going to click right here. And now we have a white brush. I'm going to set my opacity to 20%. It's already there. If you type your 2 key, it goes to 20%. If you type your 5 key, you notice it goes to 50%. Shortcuts are great, so I'm typing my 2 key going to 20%. I have a nice soft brush here. And now I'm just going to paint on those darker areas like this. I'm, just, I'm not lifting my brush. I'm painting right across here, getting all those areas there. I'm going to do one pass like that. Here's the before, and here's the after. Now I'm going to make my brush smaller. I'm just holding down my Control and Option or Alt key, and making my brush smaller and dragging to the left here, maybe a little bigger. And then I can just 
paint over certain areas that I want to go darker. And I love this painting through a selection because you can control where you want things to go dark. And this gives you that artistic license. This is like dodging and burning here. In effect, it really truly is. And maybe out in here a little bit. And take your time. I'm doing a tutorial, so I'm doing this kind of quick. And I'm, I'm even going to paint over in here just a little bit. Right in there. And on these little hilly areas up in here, some of these darker areas, I'm just going to paint over some of this stuff. Just a little bit. Just the areas I want to go darker. I'm not going to go too crazy. Every time you lift your brush and then paint again, you'll add a little bit more darkness there. So... But you're painting through a selection, and this is a beautiful method just to, you know, get things looking just the way you want them to look. Certain areas you may want darker, other areas not as dark. But I think I'm pretty good here. Let's take a look. Here is the before, and here is the after, and I like that. And then if you click this double arrow button, you can see what I've painted right there. So that's what I've done. Click it again, and we can see our image again. And again, here's the before, and here's the after. So Loving what's happening so far. Now, the next thing I want to do, I like this little green grass in here, and it's in a shadow, but I want to just take some of the grass and lighten it up and give it a little more saturation. And I will use a freehand dodging technique to do that. Using either the CX or combo panel, click the left side of the dodge icon right here. This is going to give you a 50% gray layer in the overlay blend mode. And then click this button right here. This is a handy little button, this green brush. When you click it, it opens up a color picker. So what I can do is sample some of this green tone right in here. See right there? But I want it to go lighter and more saturated. So what I'm going to do is come up into here, into maybe like right around here and click. It'll go brighter and more saturated. And now with a brush set at 10%, a very low opacity of 10%, Nice soft edge on there. I'm just going to start painting some of that green over some of these areas in here. Okay, just like this. I might go up to 20%. Let me see if I get a little bit more. Yeah, I think I'm going to go to 20%. And just paint over some of the green grass in here. That's all. Just because I think it'll add to this. And this is where you just really got to kind of think and think what do you want to happen in this image okay so let's take a look here is the before and here's the after but see it's a nice subtle bit of a green in there and i think that looks really cool and uh there you go and don't don't forget you always have this opacity slider that if you felt it was too strong you can pull this back and then just blend in as much as that as you want and i may just take it back to like around 80 2% because we generally put too much in at first because we get too excited, you know what I mean? And that's where this opacity slider can be a really nice friend to you. But let's leave it at that for now. Here is the before and here's the after. I'm still working on this shadow area in here and I just want to just darken up the darkest shadows a bit more. To do that, I'm going to grab a luminosity mask. Now you'll notice I have a selection here, but as soon as I click on this luminosity mask button, that selection goes away. And I'm going to go with the Darks 4 again because I think it's going to target what I want. Yeah, see how that's targeting? It looks really good. I'm just going to output that to a burning tool. This is a burning tool. I'm clicking on the left side. It's going to give me that 50% gray layer, but it's going to let me paint through a selection. And it's in the soft light blend mode. Now, I'm going to paint with 100%. I'm typing my zero key, and that gives me 100% opacity. And I'm going to make my brush pretty large here with a nice... 0% hardness on it and I'll make it a little bit larger and I'm just going to paint that contrast in there darken up the darkest areas just in this shadow area right here that's one pass let's take a look this is the before and this is the after I'm going to take it to 50% and paint over this one more time not quite as much but I just want a little bit more darkening in there and this is this is a lot of fun and this is exciting and this is what i call the joy of editing just you get to create you know you can just use your artist license and do whatever you want to your image here's the before and here's the after and i like it and next up are these rocks up in here aren't these rocks really cool here i don't know where this image was shot if anyone out there knows let me know in the comment section below and werner or werner i'm not sure how you pronounce your name 
would know. And please let us know, Werner, where this was shot. I'm going to use a paint contrast action. So I'm going to click on my TK action button right here. I like it on the uh, CX panel because I have mine set to not close after I choose an action. So I can always have my actions open and ready for me. I'm going to use paint contrast. So click on paint contrast and just click OK. I'm not using gray, but I'm just going to click OK for now. And what I want to do, I, I got to protect my sky here. So this is a cool button right here. Click this button right here. And then you can apply a layer mask. And I'm going to use my foreground layer mask here. And you notice it's going to protect my sky from getting light. Because I'm doing a free hand here. It's a paint contrast. I'm going to use white paint. So click on the white paint brush right here. And I'm at 50% opacity right now. I'm going to test it with this and see if it's going to work. I'm going to make my brush smaller. And I'm just looking for these light areas on here. Okay, that's not bad. Let's take a look. Here's the before and here's after. No, let's go up to 100%. Type your zero key and let's go up to 100%. And check this out. I'm an idiot, as if you didn't know. I'm painting on the mask right here, which is kind of dumb, isn't it? I'm going to go to my history right here. Click back one step right here. And let me check that history one more time. No, I'm going to go here to where I applied the channel mask. Somebody's going to say, hey, Dave, you didn't do that right. You were right. Okay, so now I got it. Now I want to make this layer active. I'm leaving this mistake in because I know you'll make it too. At least some of you will. Now, I'm still at 100% opacity here, but notice I have a gray swatch here. I got to change that to white, so click on this white brush here. Let's test this out with 100%. Yeah, I think that might be okay, and I can always tone it back with the opacity. And I'm just painting along on these lighter areas in here. Up in here. Over in here. Maybe these areas I don't want as light, so I'm going to go down to maybe 50% and paint over these areas down in here. I'm only going right to here, because this is a little bit different tone over in here. It's a little more hazy, so I'm going to stay away from that. Okay, and just... You can repaint over certain areas that you want to even go lighter. And I think that's pretty good. It might be a little too strong. Let's take a look. Here is the before. And here is the after. I'm going to take the opacity back. Let's take it the whole way off and build it up slowly and stop when we think we like it. And let me know out there when you like it. I wish you could talk to me. That would be great. 62%. Here is the before and here's the after. And I think that's going to be okay. Now I want to work on the shadow tones and darken up the shadow tones up on these rocks. And I really want to bring out the shadows down in here. So to do that, you know, I did try paint contrast and it worked okay, but I found I had better results when I did it the way I'm going to show you now. And that is put a curves adjustment layer with a black mask. And what do you think? Yeah. Multiply blend mode. You are right. I'm going to get a zone mask. And I'm going to sample some of the darker tone on this rock down in here, like right here. So click right there and click OK. And you can see that's where it's picking right there. Click OK. And now I want to tighten up that selection. So I'm going to really tighten it up to maybe somewhere right around here. And you see that that's working nice. And let's lighten it as well. I call this tighten and lighten. We're going to lighten it up to right about there. Now you can also take this slider here and you can drag it. And my notes say like a 66. So I'm going to go with what my notes said, a 66 right there. And now we're going to output this to a burn tool. So I'm clicking on the left side of the burn tool. That gives me a 50% gray layer, soft light blend mode, painting through a selection. And it also sets us up with a black brush. So I can come in here and start to paint on here and see how it just darkens those areas up really nicely. And I can lift and paint again if I need to. I'm going to get all these dark areas in here. Just paint away. Have some fun. It's really easy and simple to do. And we're almost there. Let's take a look here. Here is the before and here is the after. And if you want to darken some areas up more, you can just paint again. Use that 30% again. And just pick out the areas you think need more darkness. And go ahead and darken them up. It's just really that easy. Now let's take one more look. Here is the before and here is the after. And don't forget you have the opacity slider. If you went too far, you can pull this back. By the way, if you want to see your handiwork on this layer here, hold your option or all key down and click on the eye. 
and you can see where I burned. You see that right there? And the option or I'll click again and you're back to the image. Now what I want to do is close off the bottom of this image here. And to do that, I'm going to use a linear gradient tool. So click on your gradient tool, which is right here. And if you'll notice my paint swatch here, I have black on top, white on bottom. I want white on top. And by the way, to get these default colors for foreground and background, type your D key, that'll give you black and white, and then type your X key and that'll flip them around. So now white is on top, which is what I want. Now what I'm going to do is get a curves adjustment layer and put a black mask on it, put it in the multiply blend mode to darken. And now with that gradient tool, make sure you have the gradient tool selected. Now your tool wheel may be in a different spot depending how you have your Photoshop set up. Hold your shift key down to constrain this gradient to go straight up, not on an angle. So hold your shift key down and then just drag up to maybe somewhere right about here. And there's our gradient. Now, I want to protect my darkest darks here. So to do that, and this is a little twist here, and I think I showed this in another tutorial at one time. What you want to do is shut off this layer, because we want to make a layer mask, and we want to base it on the way the image looks right now. That's why I shut the layer off. On the multi-mask panel, click on the My Channels button. Click on Layer Mask because that is the layer mask, the gradient that you can see right there. We've chose that. Grab your mask calculator. So click on the mask calculator button. Click subtract because we're going to subtract out like darker dark tones. X out of here. Click on the luminosity mask button and we're going to choose darks four. So we're subtracting out darks four and now click equals. And now you can see the mask that we've made. We're protecting the darkest darks. There will be all the blacker areas and the darker tones of gray. And now we want to output this to that gradient layer. So click this button right here. And when I do, we don't see anything yet because remember I shut this layer off. Now I'm going to turn this layer on. And now if we want to see what this layer mask looks like, we can click the double arrow button right here. Okay, so we're protecting the darkest darks. Now I think that's too dark. So I'm going to drag this opacity off and then I'll just build it up slowly. I just want to close off the bottom of that image and that adds some depth into the image there. So here is the before and here's the after. You can also protect it with blend if, but I want to show you different ways that you can do these things. We're almost done. Just a couple more steps. You see this area over here. Remember I told you it looks a little hazy over here. I think we can fix that with a paint contrast. So let's click on our paint contrast action. I will use the gray paint this time because the gray paint will dark and darker areas and light and lighter areas all with one fell swoop, which is nice. So I'm going to click OK. Now I do want to protect my sky. So we're going to come and click on this button on the combo panel or the CX panel. I'm using the combo because my CX panel has my actions open. So this button right here, I'll add a foreground mask to that layer just to protect the sky. Now notice something. Remember I made this mistake before. You see the mask is selected after you click this button the mask will be selected. So you have to click on the actual pixel layer right here, or you'll be painting on the mask and nothing will happen. Okay, so I'm gonna try 100% opacity as a test and paint across here. And you notice what's happening here. It's darkening the shadows and lightening up the highlights, which is kind of exciting. And I'm protecting my sky so I don't have to worry about that sky in there. I'll make the brush a little bit smaller and maybe just hit certain areas in here. I'm not going to get everything. Whoops, that's no good right there. I could step back a step by clicking this button right here. I didn't like what I did right there. I'm just going to paint on here and here. Maybe over in here a little bit. Darken that up a little more. Maybe darken this up. Darken along this edge here a little bit. But you know what? Take your time as I say and get it right. But check that out. It gets rid of some of that hazy look in there. Here is the before and here is the after. And if you went too far, you can grab your eraser tool at a lower opacity and just erase things out. But for now, I think that looks okay. Two more steps and we're done. I want to close off the top of this sky with a linear gradient. So I'm going to grab a curves adjustment layer, black mask, multiply blend mode. Make sure you have your white paint on top. Grab your linear gradient tool, hold your shift key down, and from the top down, we're just going to draw a gradient to maybe right about here. And there's our gradient, but it's getting into these rocks up here, which is a no-no. I don't want that, but we can fix that 
very easily. Just come up to the multi-mask panel, click on the My Channels button, click on Layer Mask, which is the active layer mask, and you can see there's the gradient. Grab your mask calculator, click on Subtract, X out of here, and now what do you think I want to subtract? Well, I don't want it in the foreground, so I can come back to My Channels, click on the My Channels button, and now we can click on foreground and click equals and make that calculation. And now you'll see here, see we're protecting those rocks right there. And now we just need to output it to that gradient layer by clicking this button. And now you can see here's my before and here is my after. Now if that's too strong, just take your opacity and start to pull it back. And just add the right amount in there. And I think maybe it's 64. Here's the before. And here is the after. Now my sky is closed off. Now one final step, and I'm doing this in all my images now, and that is clicking on this action right here, color loom. So click that on. And basically what this is, is a black and white adjustment layer in the luminosity blend mode. And you might say, well, Dave, why don't I just put a black and white adjustment layer in a luminosity blend mode? And the reason being is you'll notice when I shut this layer off right here, you don't see any change on the image, do you? Because this is a special black and white adjustment that has been neutralized for your image. You don't see a change there. Now, if I shut this off and I just throw a black and white adjustment layer on there. So if I come up here and click on this button right here and we put a black and white adjustment layer on there, which is this button right here and put this in a luminosity blend mode and we shut this off. Notice how the whole image is dark. You'd have a heck of a time adjusting out the, the brightness ranges of your different colors here because it's not neutralized, but this one is. So if I shut this off and turn this one back on, you can see you don't see an effect there. Now when I make adjustments, it's going to be very easy to make adjustments. So I just thought I'd point that out. This is not your typical black and white adjustment layer. It has been neutralized for you. So let me go ahead and select this layer and just click the trash can and get rid of it. And now we can make some adjustments. Let's start with reds. You know, we can lighten up the reds or we can darken the reds, whatever we would like to do here. And I may just go right about here and let's work with the yellows. We can lighten up the yellows maybe a little bit and we can work with the greens. Do we want to lighten up the greens, darken the greens? Maybe I'll just lighten the greens up slightly. We can work with the cyan so we can darken up the cyans or lighten up the cyans a little bit. And I think right there. And this is all what your eye likes. And I'm going to work with the blues. I don't think there's really anything in magenta here. There might be a little bit in there, but maybe right there. But here is the before and here is the after. And this is basically giving you some nice color contrast because you're adjusting the the lightness ranges of your different colors. So you can make one color lighter and one color darker. And I think that looks really good. Let me just go back to yellows here and uh, right, right about there. But you can play around and you could go back and retweak and adjust anything that you want. Well, that's the end of our edit. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. Well, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.